Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Bernard Prendergast. I'm an interventional cardiologist and I work at St. Thomas's Hospital and the Cleveland Clinic in London in the UK. I've been in the field of TAVI uh, since 2008. Uh, I've seen it merge from being an experimental new wave procedure undertaken in extreme risk patients only uh, uh, with uncertain outcomes. I've learned a lot along the way about uh, application of the technology, avoiding complications, selecting the best patients. And here we are now 12 years later since my first procedure and TAVI is a routine intervention that we perform nearly every day in our catheter labs. We've come a long way in a short space of time, but we've still got a long journey ahead of us. So clearly younger patients are going to live longer and whilst we have reassuring data concerning uh, contemporary TAVA devices and their durability out to six or eight years, when we think of patients in their 60s and 70s or even younger, we may need to project a future for them extending to two or three decades or even longer. We also need to avoid current uh, device constraints, including the need for pacemakers. And we also need to think about the potential need for future coronary access. Well, we need to recognize that current TAVA devices were designed to meet the immediate uh, clinical requirements of the patient and reduce procedural complications. But if we think one step ahead and we think forward to the next generation, we need to think of a, a one-stop solution for a patient's lifetime. We need to think of very prolonged durability and we need to effectively restore the diseased aortic valve back to normal levels. Well, don't misunderstand me. Current TAVI devices are, have done a fantastic job in extending the life and enhancing the life of many, many thousands of patients in the last 10 to 15 years. But what we need to recognize is that we are effectively giving these patients residual mild slash moderate aortic stenosis with an effective orifice area of 1.5 centimeters squared, a mean gradient of around 11 millimeters of mercury. And really we need to think beyond that uh, standard now and try and recreate the normal valve that will function normally for the rest of the patient's lifetime. We need novel designs that will have much greater effective orifice area, two, 2.5 centimeters squared, gradients of five millimeters of mercury or even less, replicating normal circumstances. We need valve leaflets that will function uh, perfectly, and we need valve leaflets that will not calcify and degenerate over time leading for the need for a second intervention. Well, again, we've made fantastic advances in the last 10 years. We already have leaflets with anti-calcification properties, but there are emerging technologies which will be even better. Acellular leaflets with no uh, DNA on RNA, leaflets that will not stimulate the degenerative calcification process. And whilst this may be uh, a future vision, it's something that's already been encapsulated by current and existing devices and research. And this is something we need to harness for the future. Well, as we've mentioned, we need innovative designs of the valve frame, of the valve leaflets, and of the tissue properties of the leaflets themselves that will ensure optimized valve area and hemodynamic performance that replicates the normal aortic valve. And we need these results to be permanent in a patient's lifetime. We know that repeat interventions on a lifetime journey of an individual patient are not welcome and are associated with cumulative risk. If we can make aortic valve intervention a one-stop entity, we'll have reached a new nirvana.